what is .NET framework, what .NET framework provides, what uh, we can do using .NET framework. Now let us understand the architecture. So as we already discussed, whenever we install .NET framework, two things are getting installed. One is CLI, one is base class library. Base class library is nothing but the basic building block for developing the applications. It provides a lot of predefined classes and using uh, uh, those predefined classes interfaces and using those uh, methods, you can develop .NET application. And if you want to run that .NET application, you need one runtime environment and that runtime environment is nothing but your CLR, right? So CLR uh, provides some component and uh, uh, some components like uh, it provides exception manager, it provides garbage collection, it provides security manager, it provides exception handler, it provides a JIT compiler, right? So lots of uh, components are provided as part of CLR. So whenever you write any application, then the CLR, there is a component called the JID that will take the responsibility to convert your MSIL code into machine code. And once you convert the machine code, then that machine code is going to be executed by the underlying operating system. Then using .NET framework, you can develop different kind of applications. You can develop Windows applications. You can develop SP.NET, any uh, web application. You can develop console application. You can develop WPF or WCF applications, right? So these are the things uh, we have already uh, discussed, right? So whenever you install a base class libraries, so these things are going to be installed. So, so these things means uh, for threading, there is a separate namespace, right? So for uh, security manager, there is something uh, separate namespace. For garbage collector, there is something else. So all these things are nothing but these are one one assembly. And inside each assembly, there are uh, you can find a lot of DLLs. And inside each DLL, you can find a specific uh, lot of classes. And inside classes, you can find a lot of methods and fields and properties. And you can uh, use those fields and properties directly in your application, right? See, uh, so we have already discussed, we have different types of programming languages using which we can work and we can develop any .NET uh, applications. One of the language is VB.NET, another is C -Sharp. So whenever you write the uh, program using VB.NET, then the compiler is going to be VB.NET compiler, which will be VBC, which will take the responsibility to convert the source code written in VB programming language into MSIL code. And that MSIL code is, go, uh, MSIL code is going to be handled by the common language interpreter, that is CLR, right? If you write the code in C-sharp language, then the C-sharp compiler, that is CAC, is going to convert your source code into MSIL code, right? Even if you develop the application using VB.NET or you develop the application is going to be C-sharp, .NET, the respective language compiler is going to be different. For VB.NET, the compiler is VBC. For C sub.NET, the compiler is CACC. But the CLR is not going to be different for VB or for C sub, right? Since the CLR will take the responsibility of converting the MSIL code, whether the MSIL code is generated using VB.NET or whether it is generated using C sub.NET, the CLR, the CLR or the common language interpreter will take the responsibility to convert that uh, MSIL code into machine code. And that machine code is going to be executed by the underlying operating system. Clear or not? Right? So you can see in base class library, you can find system.web, system.data, system.windows form, system.drawing. So these are nothing but uh, different, different, uh, uh, you can say uh, the namespaces, or you can say uh, different, different assemblies. And uh, you can see inside system assembly, we have collection, we have IO. So these are nothing but. So for better understanding, let's see. Suppose I want to use using system, you can dot, you can see collection, component model, data, deployment, diagnostics, drawing, localization, globalization. So many uh, things are there, right? So you can use those. Suppose I, I'm using one component. Uh, let's say stop watch, right? So this is a predefined class already provided. If I want to use that class, you need to use one namespace called system dot diagnosis, right? And if you go to the definition of this class, 
right you can see oh, uh, in which location this uh, assembly is there so you can go to this location and you will find there is a dll called system dot dll and as part of this system dot dll this class uh, is is defined and this class belongs to this namespace and inside this system dot dll class apart from this system dot diagnostics namespace there are many other namespaces are defined right and in each namespace you will find lot of classes here i have one class and this class having some uh, methods and some uh, uh, variables and some uh, properties so i can use these properties directly using this stopwatch right so this this is nothing but uh, and these things are provided by base class libraries so you can see these things right so applications means you can develop a uh, windows form application you can develop sp.net web applications right and there is a technology called edio.net so basically if you want to interact with any database right in the, to perform some crude operations right if you want to insert update delete retrieve any kind of operations you can perform using edio dot so wc basically if you want to develop service oriented application so uh, best applications uh, for uh, for distributed environment then you can use wc distributed environment means what now if i want to develop one application uh, or if i want to develop one service and i and i want uh, that and that service is going to be consumed by many different clients one of the client uses java programming language one of the client uses dotnet programming language one of the client uses ios one of the client uses android then for that purpose i can develop wc services right so linku so basically it is a way of writing the queries like sql so in sql you can perform different kind of operation you can get the top five record you can filter the record using where condition right you can uh, uh, join the uh, join multiple tables right whatever the sql operations you are performing on a database you can also do the same operation on inline object right in dotnet using the concept called the link queue we are going to discuss this edio.net in detail this link queue in detail i'm not going to discuss wcf because it is altogether a different story i'm going to discuss entity framework so basically it is a orm approach or see if you if you are not using entity framework then using edio.net framework you can do the operation but entity framework will uh, handle all these things so we are not going to write any code uh, for communicating with the database everything will be taken care by entity framework what we need to do we need to inform the entity framework what is the database we are going to use what is the uh, credential we are going to use what are the operations we are going to use so everything uh, so this information we need to provide to the entity framework once you provide this information to the entity framework entity framework will establish a uh, uh, establish a communication between our dotnet application with the database once the uh, com uh, communication established then we can perform different and we can perform all the database operations so what is required and parallel link means whatever of uh, link i have discussed we can convert those queries into parallel link so with parallel link what will happen now it will execute the link queries parallelly right so we will discuss this parallel link in detail in our coming uh, so uh, in our coming sessions right so design.net framework design principle so see so i have already discussed you dotnet framework is interportability what do you mean by interportability suppose uh, there are many uh, versions of a dotnet framework starting from dotnet framework 2.0 uh, 3.0 4.0 5.0 so like this there are many different uh, versions of dotnet framework if you develop one application using 2.0 dotnet framework and later you update it to dotnet framework 3.5 then the application is still going to be work so this interportability provided by .NET framework, right? So portability means what? Now application you can build on .NET framework can work on Windows platform in it previously, but now in recent time, so Microsoft introduced .NET Core and .NET, not a framework, simply .NET, which makes application to work on cross platform. That means the application can now work on a different uh, operating systems like Mac. Uh, Linux and Windows 
if you develop the application using .NET Core and .NET security. So .NET framework provides security mechanism. So they provide inbuilt security mechanism. Suppose you uh, create one DLL or you create some class libraries and if some other person accessing those class libraries, then it will check the security, whether the other person who is accessing my code or my, accessing my class library has rights to access or not. If, if it has rights, then you will provide, otherwise you will give you some error. So this security management is already automatically managed by .NET framework, right? So this is automatically managed. This is automatically managed. Security is automatically managed. And memory management, which is the biggest advantages of a .NET framework, the memory management is automatically done by .NET framework, right? So there is a component called garbage collector, which is a part of CLR. That garbage collector will take the responsibility to allocate and deallocate the memory, right? So suppose whenever you are creating the object, it will create the, the CLR will decide where it will going to create the object. Whenever the object is unused, there is no reference to that object, then it will delete the object from the memory, right? So all these things are going to be handled automatically by the garbage collector, right? Which is a part of CLR, which is a part of a .NET framework. So, uh, so in our coming days, uh, we will discuss this, how memory management is done automatically in detail. The securities we are also going to discuss in detail. So these are not going to be a discussion part because it is, uh, we cannot uh, show you these things, right? So yeah, I can show you one thing. I will develop one application using older .NET framework and then I will upgrade that application to a later version of a framework and I will show you and I will show you it is still working so that I can show you and this part uh, I cannot show you because I do not have uh, other operating system. I have only Windows operating system. If you guys have uh, having different different operating system, then you can check this part. You can develop application using .NET Core and you can move that application and try to run the same on using .NET. Uh, uh, develop application in one platform and run the application using other platform. So these are the things. Uh, I have discussed today and uh, tomorrow I'm going to discuss wh what is exactly c -sharp programming language, what are the features provided by c -sharp programming language, how to download and install .NET framework, how to download and install Visual Studio, do I need to download and install .NET framework separately or it will be installed automatically whenever we install Visual Studio, how to develop application using Visual Studio, how to debug the application, how to run the application using Visual Studio, right? These things are going to be discussed in our next uh, demo class, that is tomorrow.